what we do here is go back, 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 back. What's up, guys? Let me start off by always checking the microphone. All right, looks like looks like it's working. Hopefully, you guys can hear me good. So, um, oh jeez, what we have today is just a 16 by 20 canvas, um, and we're doing a pretty much a monochrome portrait. Um, we're gonna do gray and black, and then we might come back at the end and add some white. Um, <clears throat> So I believe this, let me bring up, bring up the, the email so I could read back to you guys what was actually uh, said to me. Um, so I believe this comes in, uh, yeah, so this comes in from the Skull Squad, one of the Skull Squad members there in the chat, RC Boneyard, which is already in the chat, Skull Squad, yes! What's up, Jimmy Crack Corn as well in the chat, how's it going? So this comes in from RC Boneyard. Um, and this is a portrait of his wife's father. Um, the original photo got ruined. Um, and I'll show you in a minute. It, there's like some, some issues with the lips where it looks like it got a water stain. Uh, and then, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then he wants a Garfield the cat. Now we're not going to make it to the Garfield today. We're going to focus on the portrait. But this area right here. Um, we're going to try to do a Garfield kind of faded in the background over there. And then as well, I believe at the very end, um, maybe we could put his uh, his name and his birth year and his death year right here, which I do have his uh, the year he passed away here. So RC Boneyard, if you could send me his uh, birth year, that'd be great. Um, but that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, we're going to try to work our way through this portrait. This is not a how-to video uh, today. We're, today we're just kind of hanging out. Um, if you guys have any questions at all uh, uh, during the whole process, you're free to ask. I will answer. And uh, yeah, we're just here to have fun today. This is just kind of uh, one of the extra streams we like to do. Um, and yeah, RC Boneyard requested or asked, you know, and said it was okay if I did it on stream. So here we are. Why not? Let's have some fun. Right, so here we are going to have some fun. I'm just making sure to bring this up on my phone so that I could have it um, pulled up here. Uh, hold on, I have to. So, <clears throat> 1941. All right, cool. We'll make sure to put his name and the birth year and the death year over here. I think that'll be pretty appropriate right here in this corner. I, I'm pointing at it, but I realize you can't see. So the, the canvas has this area right here. Um, and we'll put it right here. And then we could fade in a Garfield, Garfield the cat. I assume kind of the one from the old school times that was uh, not Garfield the cartoon, but Garfield the comic, uh, which was in most of the newspapers. So I'll try to... Uh, after today, I'll try to find one up and, and we'll add, I'll add it in there. I, I could kind of forgot. I had got this ready before I got my day going and then I'm finally making it back here. And uh, just in time to get this all going. So, What's up, Bobby Lifford? Uh, what's up, Mike? Hope you're well. I'm doing fine. What's up, JP Taz? How's it going? Uh, what's up, Philip? I uh, can't wait to see you paint around. Right Thank you. Uh, what's up, Mr. Fings? High fives. High fives to you, sir. All right. All right. Now, what I was about to say. Uh, so, giveaway July 30th. Guys. Like, I'm not going to give anything away besides what I have right now. And, um, but right now, it looks like it's going to be the biggest giveaway with the most stuff I've ever done. There's at least... 10 different prize packs and I have to call them packs because there's more than one thing 
in that prize, uh, right? So it's not just like you're getting one thing. Like you're winning a group of things and there's 10 of those already. And uh, right now I'm trying to reply um, to Mr. HD stencils to see what else. Um, so just, yeah, yeah. Like, guys, you don't want to miss it. I'm, I'm like, I'm a little bit shocked how far these giveaways have really grown into it. And right now, like the one we're going to do on July 30th, it's going to be the biggest, most valuable giveaway I've done ever. Like, like you could probably combine them all together and it would equal up to the amount that we're probably giving away um, in the next giveaway. That's how, that's how big it is. So what's up, Sheep23? Uh, so Bobby Lipford, all you got to do is keep an eye out. Um, on July 30th, we will have a live stream. You will have to be present in the chat to win. And you will have to follow instructions. So uh, if you guys were here for the last live giveaway, uh, the one where we actually gave away the stuff on stream, um, <clears throat> it's going to work the exact same way as that one. I'm going to post a video up. I'm going to, you know, put some instructions. And this time I'm probably going to allow maybe 24, 48 hours between the video and the giveaway live stream. And, and this time I'm also giving you guys a way heads up, right? So July 30th is a ways away, so you have all the time. Hold on a sec. Let me answer to this. Um, Alright, so if HD Stencils agrees to this, this will be 11 prize packs. Um, and yeah, um, so for sure, you guys don't want to miss out. Um, but like, it, like I said, you'll have to just watch a quick video. I'll keep that video under two minutes. Uh, you're going to want to watch that video. I'm going to provide you instructions on that video on how to enter. All you got to do. It's all you got to do. You're going to follow the instructions on the video. It's going to be something simple like go and hit, click like on this video or go drop a comment or, you know, go on Facebook and do this. And then from those comments or wherever that list is, I'm going to pull that list. And if you followed the instructions, you're going to be entered and you're going to have to be live in the chat to give away. The reason I'm doing them live now is because in the past we had people not claim their prizes. And then I have to go through the whole time and process of like re-rolling a winner and re-rolling and re-rolling until finally somebody replies, you know, two months after the giveaway has already been over, I finally get a winner that I can send stuff to. And honestly, last time it just took too long. And uh, yeah, like I didn't even, I didn't even post it or anything about it because it was just like, come on, like you want to win? You want to win or not, son? I want to give this to people who want it, who are going to use it. Anyway, let's get started today. We have our design already. I used a projector. We projected it out on here. <clears throat> I'm going to pull it up on my phone, which is where I was at. And then, <laughs> oh, geez, man, I'm all over the place. Um, and then we could um, get started. All right, perfect. Uh, what's up, Air Todd? Uh, you just got done watching the Eagle stream. Nice. 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 You followed along the Jet tutorial and ended up coming out really well. I even sealed it with 4050 Gloss. Yeah. And yeah, I do remember Sheep, you won as well. Um, so yeah, this time for sure though, every winner... I, how did I do it last time? Was I giving out like two stencils per winner or something like that? All I know so far, all the price packs are worth more than 50 bucks. Every single one. And some of them, like, I don't know. 
I also have two of these to give away. So, if you're still interested in winning one of those, these are sitting here on my shelf. I've had these for a while, and uh, I've been waiting to give them away. And they do look like they're brand new. They were, somebody bought them but never used them. They brought them to me. I got them on a good deal. And uh, why not just pass on the great deal to you guys? That's what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to do some black, some white. Bringing some colors over, some black, some white, some gray, and a little bit of red. I'm going to grab my reducer bottle here. I need the white. I need the black. I need more reducer. All my things are empty here. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, all you got to do to be entered to win is just make sure you're there for the live stream. I'm going to try to make it later in the evening, um, at least my time zone. And so that way we could try to get and give everybody a good chance of being live. I'm going to try to space them out. So I'll probably be working on a painting or something, and then we'll try to space them out. I'm going to try to get my wife to help me out. Um, and stuff like that so that we can continue to roll the winners and stuff like that and I do uh, also as well I have confirmed at least two wait no three guest uh, artists to help me roll the winners so that you guys don't think there's some funny business going on or whatever like that they are gonna roll the winner wherever they're at live and if you follow the instructions you'll win that's, that's how we're going it, and then I'm going to write it down here, right? Because we're going to be, I'm going to try to get them all on a video call. And uh, yeah, closer to the date of the giveaway, maybe I'll tease some of the people helping with the giveaway and stuff. But uh, so far, so big, you won't be disappointed. Man, you guys are probably like, just shut up and get to painting. So I'm getting there. Sorry, I'm trying. All right, so hopefully I have enough gray here to get started. Also, big shout out to one of the other Skull Squad members, uh, James Melton. He made me this cool mug that you see here. Um, these tumblers, he's been doing an awesome job killing it on these tumblers. I have my lemonade in it right now. <clears throat> I've used this thing a whole lot, and the shine on it is still really good. The finish is really good. So big shout out to James. I'm really proud of James. He's done a really good job. So I'm sure he'll drop in. Don't tell him I said anything, though. <laughs> Just make sure I win, bro. Ah, that's funny. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. I hope to... I hope to see you all guys there. Even if you don't win, it's just good fun. Um, yeah. And I can't guarantee anybody will win because that's the whole point of a giveaway. It's that it's supposed to be random. You're not supposed to know who's going to win. That's not the way that works. I wish. Then I could pick all you guys be local and I wouldn't have to ship stuff all the way across the world. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, not only... You know, gotta take into consideration how much it takes uh, for all the stuff that we're providing, but also I have to pay for all that shipping, my son. Damn, son! <clears throat> but yeah, once I once I have everything locked down, I'll make sure to provide you guys with some better information. Uh, we're gonna have to list off all the sponsors uh, coming along for this ride, um, and yeah. It should be a lot of fun. I'm excited. I'm probably going to keep talking about it until it happens. Then afterwards, I want to be like, Oh, that was awesome. Oh, I can't wait for the next one. Ah. <laughs> all right. So all I'm doing right now is just mixing up some gray. And uh, I threw a little bit of red in there. 
And then I'm going to throw some more white in here because I want a light gray to start off with. And then I threw a little bit of more reducer in here just so that we can work it in nice and slow. <clears throat> then I'm going to shake it up. And we'll start off with this color and hopefully we end up with something kind of good. Now I'm using just a little bit of red just to give it a little bit of a flavor. So it's not just gray and black, um, and maybe we could tone it uh, just a little bit, focus more towards red. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I'm just in North Carolina. I'll pay you to ship an airbrush. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm trying to be fair, give everybody a chance. And again, it's just more f more fun than anything else. Um, it is a way of kind of just giving back to you guys as well. Ah. All right, sorry for that. I just know how to get that out of there. All right. If you win, all right. What digital projector do you use? So I have a video on uh, the projectors, projector tips for airbrushing. I'm still using that same digital projector from that video. Um, I don't even think they sell it anymore. Uh, where did it go? It's up there. It's, man, man, you're going to make me get up right when I was going to get started. Um, the brand is Al Alifos. It's like an elephant, but A-S, Elephas. And um, I, I don't know, I bought it a couple years ago now, a few years ago, a while ago now. And it's been running great, but it's only like a 720p projector. So it might be time to update to something a little bit more higher res. Um, so yeah, because it does show, especially when you try to, like this is probably the perfect size for it, but anything bigger, like, when I'm trying to do like a 24 by 36 canvas or something like that, um, sometimes the project projection is not as great, like not a, not where I would like it to be. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> All right, so I'm just gonna start working this in. Make sure I clear this off. What's up, Pedro? How's it going? Uh, is Iwata the best airbrush? Um, I mean, ah, it's not that I want to say it's the best airbrush, but because because they have so many different airbrushes. But definitely, if you want a quality, nice airbrush, Iwata is is one of the best ways to go. There are other airbrushes out there, but I know I always end up coming full circle back to an Iwata. I've tried out a lot of airbrushes and I do use a lot of different brands, but uh, still my recommendation for somebody starting is, is that yeah, just spend a, a little bit of money up front and you'll end up saving yourself <clears throat> a ton of headaches. In the long run, as long as you're able to keep your airbrush nice and clean, Iwata is a good, nice, reliable brand, and you can't go wrong with it. That's that's where I'm at. They are pricey, but for the money, you get what you pay for. So if you're looking to save money, it's maybe not the best way to go, right? But in the long run, um, you'll end up benefiting yourself more, and you'll have a, just a better tool by just ponying up, you know, a hundred and something dollars for a nice Iwata. Whether it's an Eclipse um, or like a Revolution, I definitely would recommend it. Or Badger Airbrush. Badger also makes some good airbrushes. I like their Sotar 2020. 
Um, right now, that's on my rack. I use their 155 anthems for my shirts. Um, and yeah, for the most part, they, they're okay. Um, a lot of people rave about their Patriot airbrush. And even though I, I found it to be okay, I mean, it just seems that, like, compared to other airbrushes, you, you can, like, you know, you could spend your money elsewhere and probably end up with just a slightly better airbrush. And, like, like and I say slightly better because at that point you're, you're splitting hairs, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're, like, really just taking the whole thing into account. The most important thing to remember when you're picking an airbrush is that no matter what you pick, the airbrush is not going to do the painting for you. <laughs> right? You still have to move your hands and move your finger and, and do some movement and, and have some skill. Right? No matter what airbrush you get, there is no airbrush that's just going to apply the paint for you. Okay, so. I think that's that's ultimately what I'm trying to say is like you can't go wrong if you go with a nice quality brand Badger Iwata you know um, that Creos brand um, what else the Sparmax I've had good good with Sparmax uh, Harder and Steambeck uh, is pretty good as well um, it turns out you really can't go wrong. Um, but most importantly, it's all going to come down to how well you keep your airbrush maintained. Um, and just in general, <clears throat> your maintenance and your due diligence with just how much you practice and stuff is going to go a lot further than just, you know, trying to figure out what is the best airbrush, you know, like... <laughs> You could have the best airbrush, but have no skill, and that airbrush not gonna help you at all. <laughs> uh, when you paint plastic parts, do you use and what kind of adhesive promoter? So it really gonna depend <clears throat> on a particular project. Um, most plastic projects, I do not use an adhesive promoter. Um, I just make sure to clean everything off really good. Um, I try. I know I've learned a lot from plastics just from painting on plastics and so I always try to find like the plastic number on it somewhere um, <clears throat> so certain plastics you can like uh, degrease in certain ways that you can't with others and uh, knowing some of that information has helped me just being able to get paint to stick uh, some plastic no matter how you degrease it or promote adhesion or whatever it's not going to stick there's some plastics that are just designed to be slick that is their whole purpose and stuff is made out of that and i've had people bring it and then i have to explain to them and show them the plastic number on there and uh, explain to them that that particular plastic like i could i could paint it right but it doesn't mean it's going to stay and so i'll let them know like yeah i could paint it but don't hate me if like you know it starts rubbing off or like you get a scratch and and part of it starts peeling up or something you know I'm just letting you know up front that it might not last because this is that particular type of plastic and that's just the way it is um, some plastic is like I said it's just it's made to be slick it's made so stuff doesn't stick and then other plastic it's just made to hold a mold right and that plastic can be painted like vehicle plastics and stuff like that um, and most of that time I just degrease it and clean it really good before I lay down any kind of paint and that that usually helps a lot. <clears throat> Are you freehanding this? Yeah, uh, well, I guess, yeah, the, the airbrush is all freehand. I did lay out a sketch beforehand. Um, like I said, I did use a projector to transfer an image and now I'm just kind of using my projector along with my, f my, my sketch of my projector along with my phone. I'm here to try to get as much of this in there. Um, and we're, we're working it in. So yeah, hopefully all that info helps you guys out. I forgot what I I forgot what I was talking about. Getting old is great.
that. So, one thing, I do think I want this to flow out just a little bit better. I'm going to add some more reducer in here. We're going to stir this up or shake it up just a little bit more. I do want it to just flow out a little better. Do this and move you guys over here. Oh, so you guys can see what I'm doing. up a little bit we'll just work our way from the top from the bottom up um, do you know of any way to get paint to stick to silicone like launch man no so that's one of those things where you can't like, you could try all you want but silicone is designed to not like for stuff not to adhere to it that's that's it's like one of its entire purposes um, yeah so like it makes no sense um, because when you think about it, there's like, uh, you can buy like silicone in a tube like to seal your restroom, right? And then you could use it to uh, seal your restroom and it dries up. But after it's dry, you could paint it with house paint and it, for the most part, it sticks. It's, it stays on it, right? Um, but uh, yeah, if you tr have some silicone or something, and you try to do that, it's not quite the same. Um, like if you have something that's made of silicone and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna paint it with something and then hopefully it sticks. And you try it and then you realize it's just rubbing off or it never really dries, which is something I've experienced with silicone. Because believe me, I'm, I'm right there with you. Like, I hate it when something stops me from being able to make money, right? And I make money by painting things. So when I'm not able to paint some, I'm like, how do I paint this thing? Like, I wanna know. And yeah, silicone is just one of those things where if it's not made in that color, um, yeah, you're gonna have a hell of a time trying to change it, the color of it. Luckily, it is something that they make in like every single color. <laughs> you're gonna buy silicone in like every single color, son. <clears throat> and yeah, maybe in the future, I'm, I am thinking of maybe getting, I don't know if I'm going to make, like, cast silicone, but uh, I was thinking maybe the Skullcaps is making a flexible version. So there is a way to 3D print a more flexible bending material, and uh, I could probably make one that kind of snaps on over the top, um, and that would be really cool. So... That's something I'm thinking about in the future, so I'm going to experience more of that great fun. 
Uh, once we get around to that. de mono, saludos, saludos desde México, saludos hermano uh, Christopher have you hung, have you been airbrushing, so jeez man um, I've today, this, or this year uh, will make 22 years that I've been airbrushing um, do you still make the devil from the movie legend, yes I can still make that, I still have that file um, the 3D printed file, is that what you're talking about just looking at this picture I'm just trying to figure out kind of what part is water stain and what pa what part is picture so I'm trying to figure this out here
It was a hole in it? Is that what it was? Like right on his lip right there? I'm just... I'm trying to really look at it to see, like, because... It has a crease, but it doesn't make sense for his face to have a crease right there, so I'm not... I don't think that's part of his face. I think that's part of that circular thing there. It looks like, to me, it looks like a water stain, but, um, yeah, let's, I'm just going to keep working the areas that I could obviously tell, and then I'm going to come back and we'll see if we need to fix anything there, or maybe work it a little more. Are the skull caps available? Yes. Uh, you can find them at mikesbrush.com. <sighs> uh, didn't see you at the Pueblo Lowrider show. <laughs> so you plan on going to the Springs one? Uh, yeah, so the one that was here in Pueblo was not like, a, I guess, an official Lowrider one. Um, and uh, even though I wasn't at the show, I did kind of drive by there and uh, was around. But I didn't go. Um, yeah, but the one in Springs, it's being run by a whole different set of people. And it looks really good. It looks promising. Um, it looks like they're going to bring in some nice cars. So I definitely want to go check them out. And it has the, the official Lowrider Sanctions home. <laughs> You gotta have the official lowrider sanction! If it doesn't have that sticker of approval, you won't see me! Nah, -uh, Charlie Holmes! Face kind of here. And I mind you too, this is just the gray. We haven't done any dark tones or anything. This is just the light gray. Um, so. Does anyone have the, an airbrush school? Um, I think Drew Blair uh, has what I would consider the closest thing to an airbrush school. But other than that, I do know there's a lot of places you could take uh, classes at, uh, just like Coast Airbrush is probably the one that comes straight to mind. Um, recommend them. I, I took out um, I took out a class, Holmes. I went there and I took them out. No, I took a class at uh, Coast Airbrush to learn how to do 
uh, the Luminor, and it was really informative. I had a great time, and uh, yeah, they, they really set you up for succeeding. So, um, <clears throat> if you come up, can you please bring me a Pasky sandwich? You know, I've never had a Pasky still. I asked my wife about it. She's just kind of like, meh, meh. <laughs> She's like, I don't really want one of those. Like, okay. So, yeah. I still haven't had one. And, uh, but my wife's reaction, my wife loves food. So she was just kind of like, meh. That's kind of, I was like, oh, okay, well. I didn't know it was that kind of place. <laughs> like, yeah, just me. Throw it aside. Mike, what kind of projector do you use? I already said it. It's like an Elephas projector. It's an old one I've had for a while now, a few years. Uh, you really can't go wrong with any digital projector. Just make sure it's bright. Make sure you get a brand name one. Don't cheap out and get some like cheap Chinese knockoff something. Um, and make sure it has a high resolution. Recommended it so bomb. All right, I'm gonna have to go try it. <laughs> All right, so let me see here. Just trying to work my way around. Did make some markings here.
What's up, Enzo? How's it going? What's up, Namless? Uh, how much did I miss? You missed uh, this. <laughs> uh, we're working the light gray in, and uh, we're probably going to come back in with some dark... Uh, Probably some dark gray. I don't know if I want to go full black, but maybe just dark gray. Um, that'll really get the tones in. Um, then I'm probably going to go full black and just on some few spots. And then the hat here, which looks... Boneyard, is this a police hat? Or is... That, what is... What kind of hat is that? That's, that's what I need to know. see here all right so we got that got that and um should we get this area right here His hair was dark black. Yeah, I got you. I know that. I could see. The, I could see the hair on there. Yeah, I'm just talking about his face. I don't want to go dark on his face because it's. It just it wouldn't look very good. We're gonna just do the dark tones on some spots. Obviously his hair and then his uh, hat here, which I could tell is black and his shirt, and maybe that you know, just the dark spots. But I don't want to go too dark. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to go too dark and then not be able to bring it back. I think it looks, the picture shows he's pretty, you know, I don't want to say white, but you know, he was on the lighter side. <laughs> you know what I mean, man. material we're painting on today this is a canvas uh, this, that just looks like they were stenciled yeah I guess it looks like Air Force hat oh Air Force oh okay yeah I see Air Force cool what's up Michael McClung
Here we get this other ear in. Go Navy, he says. <laughs> What's up, Irby? How's it going? <laughs> All right, I think I think we're on to something. Starting to look like somebody. That looks That was too much. It's okay, we can go back. Seen that you was coming on, I looked at the shop real quickly today. <laughs> oh my gosh, why, why, don't, don't do that. Make sure you take care of your business first. Uh, he's giving me that look. Why do you keep blowing paint in my face? Oh, this guy, yeah, 
It's like, what is going on here? All I'm doing is trying to unflatten his face. There is a lot of shading in the picture. It's just really hard to see. And I'm just trying to make sure that we get all of that kind of in there. And once we add our dark gray, this is really going to be real subtle. It's going to really play with your eyes a little bit. And um, just going to make sure I get it in here. dark gray here going to go ahead and add a little bit of black to this. On the picture, on the chin, it's smudged, not supposed to be there. Yeah, I, I, I see all this uh, like stuff right up in here. I know that's a smudge. I was just trying to get that, like, because he does have, we all have like an indention right here. And I do see it there, but I do see where the smudge was like, it looks like a water stain, like, it was just kind of running down like in that circle part kind of thing there so I'm not trying to add that in but I'm just trying to make sure we get all the like all the tone on the cheek like it's really hard to see it but it is there there's like a, a slight shadow coming in here there's a shadow right up in here that like I I laid it in there you could barely see it um, but it's enough to give his face some shape so it's not just like half of his face has shading and the other half is just flat you know, so that way we could actually spread that, um, that shading around there. All right, so I'm just adding in some black. We're going to stir this up a little bit. So what's up, Stephen Kelly? How's it going? Looking good. Thank you, thank you. So the only part I feel like I went too heavy is right here. This, uh, you know, this spot right in between the, the lips there. I was just trying to hit it in nice and light, and I maybe went a little too dark. We'll add the dark gray. I'll kind of make a look at it, and then maybe we'll come back in and just a little bit of white. will just kind of soften it up. I'm not trying to go too heavy or go back all that much, but if we have to, we have to. But anyway, I'm going to start back at the bottom again. Back under his uh, chin here. And we'll start going. Looks awesome, you the man. All right, that's what I like to hear. Now, so let's, let's try to keep working that awesome in. So again, this is just a medium gray. It's like a darker gray, but it's not really black. It's gonna look really dark, like it already looks really dark on there, but that's only because the light gray is so light. Even though the camera picks it up like super heavy, as we go through, you'll see that this is really gonna take on a lighter tone. Air Todd with the $10 in the chat. Oh my God, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you so much. 
Much appreciated. Uh, that'll help out to pay for some of that shipping on the giveaway. <laughs> Thank you so much, Todd. You've been an amazing supporter of the channel. RC Boneyard with five dollars. Nice, nice. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Much obliged. You already paid for this painting, um, so I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. You guys are always so generous. I do appreciate you guys. Ron Basil, how's it going? You're welcome. No, Air Todd, you're welcome, son. You're welcome. Don't be telling me who's welcome. <laughs> Thank you again, Air Todd. What's up, James Melton? How's it going? What's up, 88 Katana? James woke up from his nap. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, James. Alrighty, so now... going to just... Hit some parts on this ear real quick.
that in there. Good. Good. And you know what? He has like a Mona Lisa smile. If you look at his picture and you cover up the right side of his face, he looks angry. But if you cover up the left side of his face, he looks like he's having a great jolly time. Look, I could probably show you on stream. I just noticed that just uh, looking at the picture. So, right? Like, it's like, ooh, I'm angry. I'm going to get you. I was just playing, man. I'm all good. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what makes his smile pretty unique. So as I was painting it, I was just looking at it like, oh, man. Kind of seems like I'm doing two different faces. Just got off the bike now, I'm painting. <laughs> hey Mike, on the back of my phone, I put a double back tape on a magnet on my phone, so when I do need phone, when I'm working, I do not need to hold the phone. Nice, nice. Pretty smart. Every time I spray on texture canvas like that, my overspray is a nightmare. It catches all the high points. Yeah. You'll see me working really slow, and you'll see me do a lot of this, and I'm, I'm, it's literally laying paint in. I'm just doing this so lightly. Sometimes I'll go a little heavy like that, you know, but if I'm trying to get it in there like super even, I'm trying to do this. 
I'm not trying to get over spray all over the place. I'm just trying to get what I need in there and move on. Do you have any type of clear varnish on this type of canvas? Uh, any? Oh, do you use any type of clear? Um, so, like when I'm done with this painting, I'll clear it up with uh, Createx 4050, uh, probably the 4052, uh, the matte. Uh, the matte uh, is what I prefer on the canvases because it doesn't create a shine which means that uh, you won't get a shine from all this little texture here and you'll be able to focus more on the artwork Uh, so this one is for RC Boneyard in the chat. Uh, Thomas Thompson, Mike is killing it. What's up, Thomas Thompson? How's it going? in there let me get, get this other eye in here and then we can kind of focus on the eyebrows and uh, I just 
I want to have one dark point so I have a reference point as to where I want to set this dark tone and this shade in here um, and see if there's anything I need to do to adjust that. That, that was too much. Okay. Yes, he is. He is the top gun round. Thank you, uh, Matt, for canvas and gloss for smooth surfaces. Haven't considered the medium kind of finish. Yeah, I mean, um, really, the, the reason I use matte on the canvases is for clarity of the image. So, anytime you have a reflection or something like that, it's gonna mess with what you can actually see, right? Um, that reflection will get in the way. And um, that's the reason I like to use the matte, specifically on canvas. Now, if you're working on a smooth surface, um, usually, like, I'll choose the glossy, nice gloss finish. Um, and the reason is because that will show the most detail, letting it shine through when it's nice and, and uh, flat. So, yeah. And just trying to give the eyebrows a little bit of a detail there. In the picture, they're completely black. I can't tell where the individual strands are. So I'm not trying to give it, you know, set up like individual strands. Like I know this person because I don't. But I do want to fill in that area where the eyebrow obviously is. And give it a more of a, you know, texture of kind of like an eyebrow would be. Um, you know, it's just going to give it how, give it that extra look, that extra kick. Um... So yeah, just, just something I'm taking upon myself, but I am just trying to stay within the preset line of where the eyebrow in the picture actually is. Um, like I said, it is just a black, black line kind of on the picture, but we do want to kind of emphasize that it is an eyebrow. And because this picture is so big, if we just filled it in with black, I feel like it would just be like cheaping out. So I'm not... I'm not trying to cheap out on this. I'm trying to make it look good. So, yeah. I'm not trying to cheap out. I want the good shit. Give me the good shit. Pretty good. 
drop in with some shading right here. thinking that we need to do his hair on this side It looks like somebody. Alrighty, so uh, trying to decide what I want to do. So I definitely want to come back in with some black, um, white, and I want to just uh, give some edging to some stuff as well as just overall smooth some stuff out. Uh, kind of give this a little bit of a lighter tone, give the nose a little bit of a brighter spot. Uh, but before I go and do all that, I do believe I want to lay in the darkness of the hat so that I could uh, have a good idea of, of what, you know, more finish looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and add the hat in. I'm just going to mix in some black and uh, kind of lay it in. It is mainly just black, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to, drag it out or anything um, and you know what we'll leave this gray loaded uh, just in case we need some of this more um, and I'll load up black in a separate airbrush references and making up the details you have to assume are there but you got to work with what you got right yeah i'm i'm you know i don't uh i don't consider it making up because i try not to paint anything i don't see i just try my best to see everything i can so if you most pictures if you look like even this one like i was talking about like this really subtle shade here Right, and this little like little bit of a tone difference and like the chin and that in the picture it's like barely noticed like barely noticeable right but I noticed it so now what I gotta do is make sure I transfer that and I, maybe I could bold in it a tad hair you know just I, all I did is make it just a slightly darker gray just so that it is a little bit more noticeable but that all that does is give his face some shape right but I'm not trying to make up uh, what his face looks like because I don't I don't know him um, and yeah I, I don't know what his face actually looks like but I, I do have to look at the picture and I have to look past just the, the the surface and really just start digging into like okay what details can I pull out of there and I try to like like I'm a little hacker bro and I'm on your computer and I'm gonna try to find out everything right I'm gonna see all the websites you've been going. Like that that's kinda of where I'm at. I was like, I gotta try to pull all, all the information out of here that I can. Right? I'm a mechanic, I'm fixing this car, I'm about to tear it all up so I could start from scratch and fix all the problems. 
All right, you gotta pull out all the detail. So when you look at this picture, you, yeah, you start. I start off by just looking at the chin and stuff like that. But as I go along, you know, and I'm adding the stuff that I see most obvious, but then I try to look around it and then try to make sure that I get some of that extra little stuff in there that maybe is not so obvious um, and get that in there, you know. Um, you're doing great, white fluffing it. Great, right on. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to know the wife's watching. No pressure. <laughs> uh, what's the most unique surface you've painted on? Uh, computers, walls, or anything that was intended for painting? So, uh, like, I've painted on stucco. Stucco is not very fun to paint on. Um, brick walls with, like, heavy indention for the bricks. Those are also not very fun to paint on um, because the the texture, right? The, the all that squiggly and like on the bricks when it goes, um, you know, on each one of those cracks, it um, it makes it a challenge because you gotta like angle your airbrush and go this way and that way, and yeah, that that's it's not the most unique surface, but it is, uh, I guess, the most challenging one. The most unique surface probably be like people's bodies and the reason that's unique is because it's nothing like anything else even if you're just doing face painting uh, there's a whole another challenge that comes with painting on somebody uh, most importantly is that you can't just place them and expect them to just be you know people want to talk people want to move people need to breathe so it's it's um, different. And there you can see the difference between the dark gray or the gray, medium gray, and the black. The black is, is definitely black. <laughs> How is that water airbrush to your own experience? What? 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 What does that mean? What do you mean?
<laughs> That's funny. So I'm just laying this black in, trying to give it time to dry. Is it better to practice doing a self-portrait first or a magazine portrait? Um, like for practice, I would uh, recommend probably something that you could print out. And the reason I say that is kind of the same way that we do the how to airbrush videos around here. Um, you could use the same printouts to make yourself kind of some stencils using the printouts. Um, and that way if you have any issues or if you need to bring it back or if you just need to cut out piece by piece um, That's that's like there's nothing wrong with that, right? So that's something I would recommend is like if you're just starting out and you want to practice some portraits um, Definitely something that you could print out um, so that you could have mul multiple copies for one and you could have it in front of your face and you can cut a stencil out of it and all that good jazz all with the same thing. What's up, babe? How does it work? Long? <laughs> Stupid? What else? I got a full 15 calls tomorrow? Why? Take it inside. Because Zach needs them. Oh. Uh, Fun. Like what kind of calls? Bad calls? Good calls? What do you mean? Ten of one kind. Ten, ten bad calls and ten good calls? <laughs> or ten of one project and ten of another project? Ten of one project of people saying no. And then three for the bulk and two others. Oh. You gotta but find good calls, huh? Dispos. Oh. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. That looks good. Almost done. Done with the stream anyway. <laughs> You're gonna make them sad. <laughs> Almost done with the stream. <laughs> 
Almost. Roberto, saludos. Quizás un mexicano de Querétaro pudiera ser elegido con los dos. <risa> pues a ver, suerte y sí, suerte para el día del, del giveaway. Where's the hair dryer? Yeah, it's right there. Um, what's up, Trevor? How's it going? I'm watching this and doing some mental prep. I gotta do a huge canvas with three kid portraits. Kid portraits are a little tough for me. Yeah, they can be a little tough because their faces haven't really shaped yet. So I feel you on there. the gray real quick. I don't just want to blend in this black here on the side. Uh, right there. Pretty good. All right, so now I'm just gonna go with the black and just fill in what his uh, his shirt he's wearing. And then uh, I'll come back and I'll do the little detail on his uh, this uh, emblem or whatever it is he has on medallion. What is that called on the hat? Um, it looks like it's made out of metal, so I want to call it a medallion. I don't know what it is, though. Uh, and there's the overspray on the left of the hat. Drives me nuts. On the left of the hat? This, you mean? This was all on purpose. Um, if, if you go back at the beginning, this is actually where we started. This, uh, this whole side here was built on purpose, because that's how it is in the picture. See that? See that whole side of the picture there? That's how it is. On the right side, it's light. See how it is up here? Ah! Ah! Oh! 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 One over spray! Two over spray! Whoa! Ha! Ha! Nicely done covering it up with a drop shadow. It's a, yeah. <laughs> Nameless, you, you were funny. Uh, anyway, Lolo kids are cra are easy. I tried my two-year daughter and she looks scar scarring. Scarring? What is scarring? That doesn't sound like it was easy. <laughs> that sounds like it got messed up, but, um... Nameless was like, oh, there it is. 
All the overspray went to the left hand side. All the overspray, even from the right side paint, went over to the left hand side. <laughs> uh, before you dropped in the shadow and the hat was still wet. What? What? <laughs> I'm trying to think what you mean. I don't know what you mean. Know though, that everything here was done on purpose. If there was overspray, it'd be like all up in here, all up over here, on this edge. And I mean, to be fair, like if I get you really close, like if I bring you up all the way up in, like it's like, oh, that line is not exactly perfect. But like, you can see the individual freaking fibers of canvas if I bring you that close. This distance, which is where people are going to see it at, nobody is going to come in and do this on your painting right look at that right and if they do it's like get the hell out of here like what are you doing <laughs> that is not how you look at artwork <laughs> um but yeah I, you know don't beat yourself up too hard over a little bit of overspray You know whose paintings you can do that with? You know whose paintings you can get all close and in detail with? Uh, go ahead and do that with Steve Leahy's paintings. Uh, thank you very much. He will gladly accept that challenge. pretty damn good okay now I'm just gonna do some quick filling in of the details right here on this hat nobody told me what it's called I'm gonna gonna continue to call it a med it's an emblem of some sorts but it looks like it's made of metal it might be embroidered on it might be a patch I can't really tell from the picture but I'm gonna just go ahead and fill this in What's up, Paul Tarchala? How's it going? <laughs> um, Irby Wolf, it's a great job. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That is very little overspread. Mine is a lot. That is because I was too far with the airbrush. Yeah. So usually when you get too much overspray, you're, you're letting too much distance and or your air pressure is too high. So if you're even if you're close and your air pressure is too high, you're going to get a lot of uh, dust particles or paint particles that are going to fly off in the distance and they'll catch on, especially like on a canvas like this. All that little material, all those little ridges of material will catch all the overspray and you'll have a, a great old time trying to figure out how to get it off of there. So what I suggest is always working really nice and close, try to work clean, try not to get all that overspray, um, and save yourself the headache. Because that's what it will amount to if you get some overspray where you don't want it, and then you try to fix it, and then you'll try to fix it again, and then before you know it, you're just sitting there arguing with the painting. Why won't you get the paint the way I want you to on it? Uh, 
listen to me painting I'm the boss all that good jazz I've been there and if you don't talk to your paintings maybe there's something wrong with you <laughs> with you it's all your problem not not me not you know we all talk to our paintings it's normal right <laughs> okay so I believe that looks pretty good from what I could tell in the picture that that looks pretty much identical to the picture there okay so I'm gonna load up some white and uh, then I'm gonna try to try to be surgical with it I'm gonna try to correct this little piece on the lip right here um, I'm gonna subdue the, the topper lip line as well as try to subdue this uh, this part of the upper lip here uh, we're gonna try to smooth out the cheek and the nose a little bit and give some highlights where they're due um, but I believe it it's pretty close like I said I'm gonna come back uh, probably tomorrow um, after I get all my morning stuff done and I'm gonna add a Garfield and uh, the name and stuff here tomorrow uh, but I just wanted to share you guys the the experience of getting the canvas done and show you guys uh, the quick process I know you guys like uh, asking questions and always have good questions while I'm live, so I figured this was a good way for you guys to learn. And so let me just get an airbrush to load some whites in. looks incredible thank you it's fine sir always awesome work are you going to put in Highline Highlander highlights or like I did make a skull with sunglasses <laughs> um, what highlights uh, yeah I'm doing highlights right now blue shift uh, I know this is something Steve made a video about um, I didn't really uh, watch the video to understand what he was talking about. I know sometimes with certain paintings, uh, when you do some highlights, you can go too strong, which will make the highlights kind of different. But as far as I know, um, what blue shift sounds like is that something is turning blue, but I'm not sure if that's what it is, so I'm not... I'm not really going to comment on that. I'm just at this point. I'm not really worried about anything besides making sure that I get the tones that I want, um, where I want them, and smoothing out and cleaning up any areas of overspray or interest or highlights in here. I know Steve's paintings are a lot more detailed, and he's also working off of a usually a pretty good detailed reference so I know his particular case might be uh, more strenuous when it comes to the tones and stuff that he's looking for on a painting whereas on something like this uh, you gotta be pretty close but it is just a monochrome painting so it's not something I'm too considered about um, definitely if this was a colored painting I would not be using just straight up white and then we just gotta go back and I'll darken that up Good. Up the ear a little bit.
Um, Paul Tarchala with the nine dollars, nine dollars ninety nine cents. So much less than ten dollars. Uh, thank you, thank you much, sir. Always appreciate it. You always been an amazing support of the channel. Thank you so much. And I feel like I'm not talking to anybody. If the camera can't see me, I feel like I'm just talking into the void. So that is the reason why I always try to keep the camera. <laughs> so if I look up and if I don't see myself, I'm like. Where the hell am I? Where did I disappear to? I can't find myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, we do appreciate your thing, uh, Paul Torchala. Thank you so much as always. Could you add a little more detail to the left cheek area? This this area over here. I just I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out. Are you talking about his left cheek, which would be this side, or are you talking about the left cheek we're looking at, which would be this side? 